And now, Starliner Media presents Music Night at the Majestic's Holiday Extravaganza with your host, Michael Boswell. All right, joining us now on the Music Night at the Majestic's Holiday Extravaganza, Mr. Greg Kinn. Greg, welcome to the show. Hey, great. Good to see you, Mike. House tricks. <laughs> Everything's great. Yeah, you know, when you get closer to Christmas, it, it, it gets magical. I remember when I was a kid, you know, Christmas, it was, it would take about two weeks to get here. And we would, you know, we'd be in Christmas mode already, you know, by the 2nd of December. So, I, you know, when I was a kid, Christmas was always the big, the big kahuna of all holidays. Yep. Absolutely. Now, tell, tell me this. Do you remember what some of the things that you uh, had wished for as a kid? Yeah, actually, I when I was a kid, uh, there was it was the it was the golden era before they had you know parental this that and the other. It was the golden era of kids' toys. I remember getting a, a cap gun, and it, it was called the Fanner Fifty, and you could go boom, 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 and it was really cool. And I got that one year. Uh, I got an air rifle one year. I don't know how that happened. It was just like a Christmas story with my mother saying, you'll shoot your eye out. And you know <laughs> you didn't I do that, did you? I never, no, I, I couldn't. Actually, I was such a bad shot, I couldn't find my eye. Let's face <laughs> it. But, uh, you know, I remember some of the, the stuff that we got, you know, really my early, earliest memories. Um I remember asking for and getting as a stocking stuffer Hound Dog by Elvis Presley. You know, it was a 45, and the flip side was Don't Be Cruel. Yep. And I must, geez, I must have been like eight years old or so. I was really young. I don't think I knew who Elvis was. I just thought it sounded cool. And uh, so I got that. Uh, I remember one time I got. Uh, a complete Baltimore Colts uniform, you know, Baltimore Colts is the original. Uh, I grew up in Baltimore, like about two blocks from Memorial Stadium. And uh, one year I got a complete uniform of Johnny Unitas, number 19. And I remember I put the whole uniform on with the helmet, uh, shoulder pads, everything. And I wore it all day. We, we, go out to dinner i was still wearing my united uh united jersey baltimore colts and it was the whole uniform with the cleats and everything walking around like that i just uh, i just remember how magical christmas was when we were kids Absolutely. You know, it, it, the, one of the wonderful things about Christmas in, uh, in Christmas music plays a big part of this. You can't listen to Christmas music and not be in a good mood. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And I get my favorites that pop up every year. You only hear them at Christmas any, but, you know, the uh, Brenda Lee rocking around a Christmas tree, uh, Bobby Helm, you know, Jingle Bell Rock. These are some of my all-time favorite songs. They're ingrained in my memory. And, uh, you know, I just, when we would get close to Christmas, all the radio stations would start playing the Christmas music, and you'd be in the car, and it'd be snowing outside. And, geez, I, I remember it was a magical time. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, we talked about your, your favorite memories as a kid, as an adult. What's some of your favorite Christmas memories? It, uh, Christmas has always been special to me. And you know what's really special to me right now? I'm a grandpa. You know, I've got two really great grandkids, grandsons. One's eight, one's 11. You know what they're getting for Christmas this year? You're never going to guess, man. Guitar. A little <laughs> I can't believe it. Order, really cool looking Fender Squire, it's about yay big, 
And, uh, you know, it's three quarter size. You know, I'm getting a little pig nose, pig nose amp. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, they'll be well on their way. So uh, maybe next year we'll be actually jamming together. I don't know. That would be great. Well, my son is is the lead guitarist in the Greg Kinn band now, and he's been there for a while. Uh, and he, you know, he's just a uh, uh, he grew up with his Satriani was his guitar teacher, and we all lived pretty close together. And when Jack, when Satch was in the band, he used to give Rye guitar guitar lessons. So now it's kind of now Rye's kind of a a junior Satch. Yeah, well, good deal. Hey, man, I feel Christmassy. Do you feel Christmassy? I've got the hat on. Yeah, you, you've got that whole look. I, <laughs> I've yeah, We've made contact with the North Pole. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right, let me ask you a good question here. What's your right. favorite Christmas movie? There's some great Christmas movies. I love to see them because they all, always run just around this time. You know, there, there's... Uh, what, what are your favorites? You know what? It all depends on what I'm in the mood for. Yeah. You know, if I want, if I want something, you know, classic, then I'll go to either, you know, White Christmas. Yep. Or uh, if I want something on the other end of the scale, Die Hard. Yeah, Die Hard's always... You know? That's a good Christmas. But you can't go wrong you know, with... A lot of people consider The Godfather a Christmas movie. For some reason, they play it on Christmas. I don't, I don't see that. But yeah, yeah as you're say, right that's... about that. How about it's a wonderful life? Oh, you have to. That's a that's that a given. Is my favorite all time movie. Great one. That's and you've got to watch that one every Christmas. Uh, Miracle on Thirty Fourth, one of my all time favorites. Uh, a Christmas Story. You'll shoot your eye out. Thanks. <laughs> I was going to say man. we already referenced that one. Oh yeah, I I actually had. Uh, a Daisy air rifle like that, which I got for, I, I don't know how I got, my mother got that through, you know, my dad must've done it or my uncle. I had a, a, a uncle, an uncle that was, uh, was a great gifter and he would give me stuff that, you know, my parents would never give me. <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody needs an uncle like that. Yeah, you know, I look back on on Christmases. I I remember the the early ones. Um, nowadays, I see Christmas through the through my kids. You know, I, and I, uh, my son, who's who's really I'm being basically, you know, he's been an adult for many years, but. You know, I feel like we go back. I remember some of those early Christmases, and it really it it, it was magical. It real it was wonderful. I used to love to go Christmas uh, shopping. My mom would take me Christmas shopping, and uh, and then I basically, which was me going around the Christ in the store, going, "I want one of these and one of those." <laughs> yeah, that was. I think we've all done that. that. I, I music was always a big part of it, you know. Brenda Lee and Bobby Helms and and all that great stuff. It really, to me, it's Christmas music that really brings forth the Yuletide spirits. Now, do, do you uh, in when when you were able to tour, when you when you toured around Christmas, did you include any Christmas songs in the playlist? Yeah, we used to do. We used to do a couple of them. Uh, you know who inspired that was uh, Springsteen, because Springsteen would would do a couple of good Christmas songs right around this time of the mm -hmm. year, and uh, I thought, gee, what a great idea! So we would we used to do um, Santa Claus is coming to town, Merry Christmas, baby. We had a three or four standards that we used to do, and for a while there, I I wrote song every every Christmas. I would write a song. A Christmas song. And I had, I remember Santa's radical sabbatical where <laughs> Santa takes the year off and goes to Acapulco <laughs> and, you know, spends the, the holidays drinking beer on the beach. 
And then uh, I had one called uh, Let Christmas Come, which is the story of uh, being stuck at Heathrow Airport back in the 80s when we were on tour. And we were trying to come back from a, a European tour. We were stuck in Heathrow Airport and the entire country went on strike. I mean, it was a general strike. You couldn't get a, a hotel room. You couldn't get anything. We were stuck in the airport and I had my guitar with me and we were waiting for three days to get a plane out of Heathrow back to uh, New York to go back to California. And I remember thinking to myself, why I, I better write a song or do something to, you know, alleviate the craze. And it was right at Christmas. So we were trying to get home in time for Christmas. And I bought my son this really great Stiga hockey, table hockey. Remember table hockey? Oh, yeah. You know, little guy. Yep. And, uh, you know, and this was a, it was a real nice one. It was a European made one, you know, it's, I think it was ice cats. And, uh, we, I was trying to get it back because it was a great Christmas present for my son. Mm -hmm. But every time I went through a new layer of security, they unwrapped it. So I had <laughs> it wrapped and unwrapped four or five times before I even got on the plane to come home. But it didn't matter because, you know, kids they would just rip this stuff off and dive right into it. Exactly. But I remember that. And so I made a, you know, I, I, I used to do a lot of songs just made up on on the year you know just a the, a yuletide spirit thing now have you have you ever thought about you know recording all those and putting out a rock and roll christmas album well you know if you go to the gregkin.com website uh i believe and we do this every year i know we did it last year the there's an entire worth of albums that i recorded in my home studio, some of it was live on the radio. And uh, a lot of those, so all the songs that I wrote, geez, I'm thinking, I mean, it must have been, uh, must have been about a dozen of them. Uh, and so we, we uh, put it out there. So you could go and download it and enjoy it. You know, I, I had my whole family, I had Rye and my daughter, and we all were singing together. It was a real kind of a kin family Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very nice. Well, I'll tell you what, Greg, we're going to uh, wrap uh, wrap up the, the segment here. And uh, we do appreciate you coming by for the uh, Music Night of the Majestic Holiday Extravaganza. Extravaganza? That is exactly how I would characterize What's going on right now? This is an extravaganza. And oh, by the way, you know, I'm here. I don't know if you guys are, could notice this, but I'm in the recording studio. And who, right now, because of the COVID thing, everybody I know is in the studio because that's really all you can do. You can't play any gigs. I haven't played a gig in over a year. So here we go, having a lot of. Everybody that I know, Todd Rundgren, uh, Eddie Money's kids, uh, Rick Springfield, all the guys that I usually work with, they're all in the studio now working on a new album. So there's going to be a rush of albums coming out probably uh, by next summer. Everybody will be uh, putting this stuff out. But, you know, this is the time to do it. You can't really do a gig. Exactly. Hey, Merry Christmas from the world of the studio. If you enjoyed Music Night at the Majestic's Holiday Extravaganza, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and at musicnight.net. Music Night at the Majestic is a copyright production of Starliner Media. Any use of this program, its audio or visual images without the express written consent of Starliner Media is prohibited.